This is John Black, Super Chemist. We're here to make some sodium ethanoate or sodium acetate, which is what most people call it. So I'll call it that from now on. Now the vinegar you use, it has to be distilled white vinegar. It needs to be clear. This bottle, I have something else in there that's not vinegar, um, but it needs to be like water clear, no additives and other crap. And you can see here the diluted 5% it said. Uh, on the right there I have 84 grams of sodium bicarbonate. In the middle I have a liter of vinegar and on the left I have another 200 milliliters of vinegar. So I put the 1,200 milliliters of vinegar in this big pot here, and I'm basically just going to dump in the sodium bicarbonate. And uh, I showed you how to get that in another video. Um, basically, you want to do this really slow. Uh, if you don't, you're going to have like, you know, if you shake up a pop can and you open it up, you know, that kind of thing. It's going to uh, spill all over. This is actually the volcano experiment that you'll see on sitcoms where the kid's doing a volcano experiment. This is it. Uh, so you put it in there real slow, uh, bit by bit, and uh, just wait it out. And you put a little bit more in, you know, you let it subside. Um, and when I get done here, I'm going to... Uh, Put a little bit extra uh, vinegar in there and uh, the reason why I do that is because if you don't uh, what happens when you start to crystallize this stuff right at the very end where you're almost ready to you know get your crystals out it all solidifies into one big chunk locking in your contaminants uh, so you don't want that um, the reason why I did this video even though it's a simple video is because no one would tell you how to get the crystals. Uh, they're all just telling you how to get hot ice. Uh, you know, this isn't really pure crystals. They just want to do the little experiment. And I, I could care less about that experiment. Uh, I mean, it's nice to watch. So I'll just keep adding it and adding it. And uh, when I got done there, I just out of curiosity, I checked the pH. It was neutral. Um... And then, like I said, I added in about uh, 300 milliliters extra of uh, vinegar just to make sure that I had an excess of vinegar instead of an excess of sodium bicarbonate. And I started up, and then I just let it sit there for a while. I filtered it all, even though it was all looked clean and there wasn't really anything in there. I filtered it anyway, just in case. And uh, whatever I do, you don't want to put this on the heat. And I put it in a very big uh, Pyrex pot because the more surface area, the faster it'll evaporate. And I'll tell you what, it really does evaporate a lot quicker. So I let this sit for a couple weeks. I added in a bigger uh, container. And then when it got down to a little bit, I put it into the smaller one. Uh, but it's starting to crystallize now. And I wanted to show you some of the crystals. There's even more, but I'll, sh I'll show you in a second. Now you can see the crystals are starting to grow. I wish I could had a better camera. So I picked a couple crystals out to check them out. You can see how pure that is. I mean, that is like, those are like, wow. 
look like glass, glass rods or whatever. Well, there's my crystals. See, there is some water in there still. Now I want you to look at how I... Look at that. See how it's slush. As you can see, I put it in this frit funnel. As, and it's not totally clear. That's from all the sugars and stuff like that in there. So, I turn my vacuum pump on and uh, dry all that out there. how nice and white them crystals are. Now I'm just going to use a squirt bottle. I'll squirt, I got ice cold water in there. I'm going to just squirt it on top so it has a layer of it on top. Go through, I'll keep my pump on. Suck all that through there, get the impurities off of there. You got some pretty pure stuff. And before I filter and wash this. I should have thrown it in the refrigerator and let it cool down. Uh, that way it'll really precipitate out a, a lot more salt. I forgot to do that, and I forgot to do it on my uh, silver nitrate video, too. Um, but it's always good before you filter it and wash it, get your crystals, um, throw it in the refrigerator, uh, maybe even in the freezer for a little bit, but you don't want it to freeze anything, you know what I mean? Just to get it really, really cold before you actually filter it and then wash it. Keep in mind, you are going to lose about 10% from recrystallization that's stuck in this brown water here. Although, like I said, I, I'll recrystallize this one more time here, uh, the rest of this crap. And then I'll label it not so good. So I'm not going to dry it out, but when you dry it out, put it in the oven. You know, 300, 350, something like that. Water boils at 2, 212 Fahrenheit. So I'm using Fahrenheit because uh, in the United States, we have uh, ovens go by Fahrenheit. So you want it to be above that, or obviously the water will never evaporate. Um, I, at the most, have taken this up to 350. Usually I do it at 300, but depends on how fast I want it done. It takes a long time to get it anhydrous, anhydrous. The last one or two molecules of water just do not want to come off. Um, but this should not brown at all. I mean, you should, if you have, I've taken up to 350, so I know for a fact, at least up to that temperature, you will get no brown at all. If you do, then you need to recrystallize your stuff because you got some impurity in there. And it wouldn't hurt to recrystallize this one more time or wash it with more water, whatever.
I want you to keep in mind the water crystallization is like 40% or something like that on here. So that means if you have 100 grams of crap you're putting into the oven, you're trying to make it anhydrous, you're only going to get 60 grams back. Um, you have pretty much a pool of water once the crystallization comes out, then it takes forever to evaporate that water. Now you can heat this stuff up and just take it down and when you uh, get ready to recrystallize it and throw it in the refrigerator, just throw a little bit of extra vinegar in there and whoosh it with uh, ice cold isopropanol, rubbing alcohol. And that's it. I'll have some ultra pure sodium acetate and uh, you'll get some pretty pure, uh, pretty pure crystals. But this is ultra pure right here. You ain't gonna get better than that. All right, here's my stoichiometry. As you can see, one mole of the sodium hydrogen carbonate, that's the baking soda. One mole of acetic acid, that's the vinegar. And I get my product, sodium ethanoate or sodium acetate, most people call it. So the sodium bicarbonate was easy. 84 grams is one mole, so I weighed that out. 60 milliliters is a mole of acetic acid. Uh, I used vinegar, which is 5%. If I take 1,200 milliliters, which is what I used, times 5%, that gives me 60 milliliters. Now, I don't know if they're going by weight or moles or volume or whatever. So I'm just trying to do approximation because I'm going to add in a little bit extra anyway. Uh, so I got my 1,200 milliliters. And then I added in 300 milliliters later extra. There's two reasons for that. One reason is this. If I add in more of this, then at the end, I'll have this, which is a salt, and this, which is a salt, two salts that I'll have to recrystallize out. If I add extra of this, it's no big deal because this is liquid. Water's liquid, carbon dioxide, that'll leave. So you're only going to have one solid over here. And that's a better deal than having two solids. Um, the other reason is if you don't add extra vinegar, when it gets down to the last bit where you're almost ready to pour off the water and fil filter it and, and uh, wash it off and dry it and you're done, right at that moment before you do it, the entire thing will solidify. And I'm sure if you know what hot ice is, you'll know what I mean. It just turned and it'll lock in all the sugars and stuff that you know you don't want in your crystals uh, so that's that's a bad thing anyways I always remember science is great